Martin Michigan, the principal here at Buffalo High School. It is my honor to welcome 50 veterans and over 70 family members to our presentation today, along with over 1,850 students in our auditorium. Over 2,000 people have joined us here today. And I want to thank you to all of you join, for joining me and our school as we have an opportunity to honor our veterans. First, I'd like to welcome all of you, as I've said before, to our Veterans Day program. I'm honored to be speaking with you today on such an important occasion. We're here today to honor our heroes, to remember their achievements, their courage, and their dedication, to say thank you for their sacrifices. Thinking of the heroes who join us in this group today, and to those who are only here in spirit, a person can't help but feel awed by the enormity of the sacrifices this group has made. We stand in the midst of patriots and the family and friends of those who have nobly served. I am hopeful that today's ceremony will serve as a small token of our appreciation for the courage, pride, determination, and selflessness that you have all displayed. At this time, I'd like to introduce our platform guests and audience. If you please hold your applause until all of our guests have been introduced. Please stand as your name is announced. Superintendent of Buffalo Hanover and Montrose Schools, Dr. Scott Tillman. Freshman, Audrey Green. Senior, Sabrina Munster Tigers. Guest speaker, Mr. Tom Kelly. Senior, Madeline Schwabach. Director of Teaching and Learning, Mrs. Pamela Miller. Minnesota Senator, Bruce Anderson. And Representative Eric Lucero. Please join me in a round of applause. body and to our community members for your attendance today. And as a reminder, at the conclusion of today's program, I will come back to the podium to formally dismiss our student body. So at this time, please stand as the Army National Guard honors us with the presentation of our college. Please remain standing, remove your hats, and continue to stand until our Army National Guard has left the gym and at the conclusion of our national anthem. It is now my honor to introduce our BHS concert band as they perform under the direction of Mr. Scott Prevail, our national anthem.
Today, we gather as free men and women without regard to race or color because we all share one creed. We are proud Americans and bonded together in solemn reflection. We want to thank, honor, and remember our nation's veterans for their service and sacrifice. We want to remember that our nation's freedom was purchased at a heavy price. Yes, we remember many things on Veterans Day. Most important of all, we do remember the sacrifices spanning generations. Starting with the Revolutionary War and all the wars that followed, many men and women served and many gave their life so you and I could live as free people in the greatest nation in the world. We must never forget. On Veterans Day, we want every American to know and remember the true price of freedom. On Veterans Day, we want all veterans to know how grateful we are for all that you have done. Many of us understand the importance of Veterans Day and the need to honor and remember those brave soldiers who have served and are serving our great nation. But what about those who don't understand the importance of Veterans Day? What about those that only think Veterans Day is a holiday? What about the young? How do they come to appreciate the need to thank our veterans for their service and sacrifice on Veterans Day? As more and more war veterans pass away, there are fewer and fewer left to carry the torch of remembrance. We must pick up that torch and help others learn, know, and remember the true price of freedom. There are many ways to teach the values of patriotism and citizenship. As county attorney, I have chosen to go to schools throughout Wright County and speak to government and law classes. I have spoken to over 12,000 Wright County students. I talk to the students about our great country, the opportunities they possess because they live in the United States of America, what it takes to be a good citizen, and why there is a need for the law, and more importantly, why there is a need to respect the law. I ask the students, what is the greatest nation in the world? They respond, the United States of America. I ask them, why is the United States of America the greatest nation in the world? They respond, because of the many freedoms we have. I tell them, the United States Constitution and the Bill of Rights guarantee all citizens the following rights and freedoms. The right to bear arms, the right to a jury trial in a criminal case, the right to an attorney in a criminal case, the right against self-incrimination in a criminal case, the right to be free from unreasonable searches and seizures, the right to due process, the right to equal protection of the law, freedom of speech and press, the freedom of religion, the freedom to peacefully assemble like we are doing here today, the freedom to pursue a livelihood and happiness, and most important of all, freedom itself, liberty. I ask the students, what does the average citizen owe to society for all these rights and freedoms? I tell them, pay taxes and remain law-abiding. Is that asking too much? I tell the kids, that's a heck of a deal. And because of those brave Americans like you veterans here today in Buffalo, who were willing to serve, it is as good a deal today as it was when we first got it back in 1787 when our Constitution was ratified in 1791 when our Bill of Rights was passed. Now although the average citizen only has to pay taxes and remain law-abiding to enjoy these rights and freedoms, I remind the students that these rights and freedoms would not have been possible except there were people willing to die for them. There can be no freedom unless one is willing to die for freedom. Indeed, these freedoms came at a cost, a high cost, the ultimate cost, life itself. In World War I, 116,000 Americans lost their lives. In World War II, 400,000 Americans lost their lives. In Korea, 37,000 Americans lost their lives. In Vietnam, 58,000 Americans lost their lives. In Iraq, 4,900 Americans have lost their lives. And in Afghanistan, so far, 3,550 Americans have lost their lives. 
I want the students to know and remember the true price of freedom so they will never forget the sacrifices that came before them. I tell them that because of those who have been willing to serve, they have a shot, a chance at the American dream. They can be whoever and whatever they want. That's all anyone can really ask for is a shot, a chance. Indeed, you veterans, today in Buffalo, and all veterans, including families of those who pay the ultimate cost, you should be proud because of you, your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, and those after have a chance to live in the greatest nation in the world and have a chance of making something of their life. And for that, we thank you. I ask the students, if any have relatives who have served in war, many raise their hands. I ask them if on Veterans Day they send their relatives who were veterans a card thanking them for serving and providing us all an opportunity to live a life like no other. Sadly, few if any raise their hands. I tell them I'm a little strange and just for the fun of it, on the next Veterans Day, they should send a card thanking them. Because as G.P. Stern stated, silent gratitude isn't much use to anyone. That is why on Veterans Day, we gather to remember, honor, and thank those soldiers who serve and are serving our great nation. On Veterans Day, we want all Americans, young and old, to understand and appreciate that the United States of America is that feeling we get at our hometown sporting events when they play the national anthem. That the United States of America is that feeling we get when we recite the Pledge of Allegiance. That the United States of America was, is, and will continue to be worthy of all sacrifices made. On this Veterans Day, let us not forget that the price of freedom is eternal vigilance. The United States of America has always taken our freedom and our way of life seriously. Freedom is what makes the United States of America the greatest nation in the world, and we can't live free if we live in fear of the terrorists. The world is a dangerous place, and we thank God for those who have served, are serving, and someday will serve in order to keep us safe and free. On this Veterans Day, let's give us their honor, give them their thanks, and pay them respect. Now let me conclude by saying, I have never been in trench warfare during World War I, but I'm grateful to those who have. I have never been on an amphibious landing craft heading for the beaches of Normandy during World War II, but I am grateful for those who have. I have never known the hell of Korea, but I am grateful for those who have. I have never had to fight in the jungles of Vietnam, but I am grateful to those who have. I have never had to fight in the deserts of Kuwait and Saudi Arabia, but I am grateful to those who have. And I never fought in the caves of Afghanistan, but I am grateful to those who have. And I've never been subjected to the urban terrorist guerrilla warfare, IEDs, of Iraq. But I'm grateful to those who have. May God bless all of you. May God bless those who have served and are serving. And may God bless the United States of America. Thank you for having me. And now, if you are a non-veteran, would you please rise and give our veterans a well-deserved round of applause. And I do want to hear you.
this time, we would like to recognize families. Please stand if you have a family member that has served or is currently serving in the military. We thank you for your support. In recognition of all of our veterans present here today with us, our VHS concert band will perform the Armed Forces Salute. Veterans, please stand and be recognized as I announce and you hear the music from your branch of service.
I would like to introduce freshman Audrey Green to come to the podium and share with us a poem in honor of our veterans. The title of the poem is called Stepping Forward. The reason I selected this particular poem was because it highlights the sacrifices that our veterans have made to protect our freedom and our country. Their dream was to create a nation where freedom could reign. But who would protect that freedom? Because freedom is not free. So they came forward, brave men and women who would risk it all so we could live free. They answered the call, willing to give it all. They defended our nation and held our flag high. They took a brave stand to defend this land. They served with courage, honor, integrity, commitment, valor, character, bravery, sacrifice, dedication, and excellence. Veterans, we will always remember we will always be proud. There are no words big enough. There is not a hug strong enough. No smile wide enough. All I can offer is thank you. You are our hero. You are forever in our thoughts and prayers. For all you have done, thank you, and we salute you. Senior Sabrina Munster Tiger to speak about the Beyond the Yellow Ribbon campaign. Beyond the Yellow Ribbon is a program that creates awareness for the purpose of uniting service members and their families with the support of the community. They do this by connecting and coordinating organizations, agencies, companies and providing resources and support. They also deliver a series of formal yellow ribbon training to events to service men and women and their families before, during, and after deployment. How can you help support these service men and women? You can make a difference for service men and women by donating to Beyond the Yellow Ribbon groups in Montrose and Buffalo. Monetary donations will be accepted on Thursday and Friday during all lunches. Let's help bring service members all the way home. Thank you. Next, I would like to introduce BHM Girls and State Representative Senior Madeline Schwabach to the podium. The Buffalo, the Buffalo American Legion Auxiliary sponsors this program since 1937, the Girls State program provides young women the opportunity to learn firsthand how their state and local government works. Madeline will now lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Audience, please stand, remove your hats, face the flag, and join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God,
I want to extend a thank you for all of you joining us in honoring our veterans today. We would request that our veterans stay until our student body has been dismissed. We will dismiss each grade level to specific exits. Seniors, we will have to exit out the northeast doors to the PAC or the PAC doors. Juniors and students that are in chairs on the main floor, please exit out the southeast cafeteria doors. Freshmen, please exit out the southwest and PE hallway doors. To our sophomores, if you are old, and enter out, uh, exit out the respective exits to the junior and freshman hallway. For our student body, what I would ask you to do is report back to your fourth block class to end the day. And to our veterans, as it, again, I would like you to stay seated until our students have been dismissed. And please join me in one final round of applause for our